So there's a Twitter war going on over the weekend between Rogan, Hotez, RFK, Mark Cuban jumped in, and I had a couple things to say as well. So Peter Hotez goes out and says, Spotify has stopped even sort of trying to stem Joe Rogan's vaccine misinformation. It's really true that uh, Anne Marilyn just awful, and from all the online attacks I'm receiving after this absurd podcast, it's clear many actually believe this nonsense. So this is a Vice article that says Spotify has stopped, even sort of trying to stem Joe Rogan's vaccine misinformation. By the way, just so everybody knows, they just took down RFK's interview with Joe, uh, Jordan Peterson on YouTube calling it vaccine misinformation. <laughs> this just happened, right? But not Spotify. How long ago was that interview? This just happened today or yesterday. Oh, yes. This is probably a two-week interview. Gotcha. Recent, it's a recent though. interview. Gotcha. It, it could be more or less than two weeks. Go to the next one. So then Rogan responds back. Peter, if you claim the RFK is saying what RFK is saying is misinformation, I'm offering a $100,000 to the charity of your choice if you're willing to debate him on my show with no limit. By the way, at this point, that 100000 I matched 100000 Ackman matched uh, 150 I think Tate put a half. A bunch of people put 100 it's up to two point six million dollars oh, now, three million dollars now. No war, not nothing's happening. Period. So after that, if we want to go to the next Elon Musk response, maybe Peter Hotez just hates charity, <laughs> and then Mark Cuban jumps in. But wait, let me see what's he, okay. I'm going to ask you very clearly: Are you willing to debate? Because he responds back and says, "Joe, if you're serious about addressing vaccines and the fact that a two hundred thousand unvaccinated Americans needlessly perished during the awful Delta." You know, uh, COVID-1 waves, including 40,000 in our state of Texas, because of all victims fell to vaccine disinf disinformation. I want to have that discussion with you. Again, Joe wants to clarify. Uh, I'm going to ask you very clearly, are you willing to debate RFK on my podcast? Go to the next one. So then, uh, uh, by the way, uh, RFK, uh, what's it called? Peter responds back. You have my information. You have this. He keeps going back to it. Yeah. The answer is no. Here's what Mark Cuban says. Way to generalize, go to a little bit closer so I can see it. Way to talk in general, generalities, Joe. Not saying that there aren't a lot of effed up things about pharma. That's why we created costplusdrugs.com. But to ignore that same industry has saved who knows how many lives. It's bullshit, and you know it. Plugged for himself. It's Plug, also disrespectful yeah. to all drugs. the doctors, researchers, and medical professionals that dedicate their lives to saving lives. Like Dr. Hoetz, the 800,000-plus doctors in a country that believe vaccines save lives. You aren't trying to find a ground truth on vaccines. If you were, you would bring other people. Uh, trying to bully, keyword bully, Dr. Hoetz is ridiculous. You have producers that will prepare you. Same as RFK. You both do this on a daily basis. Dr. Hoetz works every day to find ways to help people. Joe, you and Musk and Twitter are mainstream media, online media, and your platforms have become... Everything supposedly wrong with mainstream. You are driven by self-interest. This is after he what plugged in his company. Yeah, in the first line. Just like the MSM has always been accused of. And you both have earned the right. You busted your asses to be great and do what you do, earn all you accomplish, but don't lie to yourselves and all of us and tell us you are different. You aren't, okay? So that's, and then I respond back. By the way, all of these tweets get uh, 50,000 likes, 100,000 likes. Mm -hmm. Joe's gets 200,000 likes, millions on top of millions of views. So this is my response to Cuban. Joe, Joe trying to bully Dr. Hotez. Interesting. Let me address five issues with your tweet. Bullying, number one. Millions of Americans walk of all walks of life were bullied into taking a vaccine. Some forced, some coerced, some lost their jobs. Families were divided. Late night hosts doing skits in syringes. Mayor of New York City giving fries. <laughs> NIH director flip-flopping on masks. MSM calling those who question the vaccine conspiracy theories, and you call Rogan a bully. Okay, number two, capitalism. What makes capitalism work? Freedom to buy, sell, try, fail. Keyword is freedom. You told me 10 years ago, Tom, you weren't doing when we were in Nashville when I asked him what's his favorite book. Yep. He said, Atlas Shrug. I even gifted you a first print, first edition of the book. I think November of 2015 when I interviewed him at the American Airlines Arena. In his office. Yeah, in his office. A story of dystopian American, which private business suffers under increasingly burdensome laws and regulation. Thank you. Of all the people who know what happened the last three years, it's you. We all know who got destroyed in that book, the small business owner, the man and woman who risked it all, okay? They were mocked, bullied, silenced. How are how were laws and regulations during COVID? How many small businesses owners lost everything? You know the stats. You know the numbers. You know you're against this. I sometimes wonder what you fear. What is preventing you from using your logic and experience and common sense and that you have a ton of to share your POV with your followers? Number three, debate. What's wrong with debate? I kind of suggested for him to run for 2024. And if you can go a little lower, 
you know, about protecting these guys. Let's not disrespect these people that are doing this. One of the benefits in America is the healthcare system. My dad, 37 years, got a massive heart attack. He wasn't supposed to live past 65. We just celebrated his 81st birthday. But just like cops, 99% of them do the right thing. The 1% who don't, should we not hold them accountable? All Joe is asking for is a debate. If Dr. Hortz is right, then what's he have to lose? Is he too good for it? You sure don't free debating anyone. Why protect him? Debating is the American way. It helps us get closer to the truth. And then Musk and Rogan comparing them. I talk about what happened before October Makers, when we didn't even have twi Twitter. Yeah, you know, yeah. We could only debate in private settings. Our RFK interview was taken out two years ago. Content creators were walking on eggshells. Musk isn't silencing anyone who's arguing for vaccines. He's actually creating a climate to have the debate. Just last week, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw this clip or not, on MSNBC with Jake Tapper and Rachel Maddow. One is CNN, one is NBC. They're like, we won't air the Trump speech because we already know in advance that he's going to tell lies. As yeah. if Joe Biden only tells the truth. Yeah. That sounds like a dictatorship where the elite knows what's best for you and I. As if we can't think for ourselves. A bit arrogant and pompous, don't you think? Thank God for Twitter, Spotify, and Rumble. And other plan. And last but not least, I gave him a credit for plugging his company as a market. I respect your strategy <laughs> of getting into this threat to promote cost drugs, plus, cost plus drugs. A lesson to all small business owners: keep pushing the envelope. We need more voices. By the way, all of this is going on. All of this is going on simultaneously. Guess what? He's not doing the debate. Oh, and he made a video saying, well, people came to my front door, and I'm being harassed, and I have to kick people out. And I'm doing, he made a video, all them, everybody's going after him, protecting him, all this stuff. But at the same time, they're fearing the debate. What are your, what are your thoughts about this Twitter war? Uh, Rob, are you able to pull up uh, my tweet? Uh, it's much shorter, I promise you. <laughs> um, it's uh, like the hot take mixer, I called it. But look, uh, I, I don't think it's good that people are turning up to his door, whatever, whatever's going on. That, we don't want that in society, right? Just someone had a disagreement online, suddenly people are showing up in, at your door. I think it's bad. But in terms of the the, the, the discussion, I, I made this point in this thread that I, if, I don't know if you can scroll down a little bit. Um, it's like the hot mixer uh, that I did uh, maybe yesterday. It's just like, keep going. Nice cannon. <laughs> this me with my son. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, there we go. Part one, part and two. You Can tweet you tweet a lot, Kat. I do. I do. That's a great picture. Were you in front of Ten Downing Street with that? <laughs> uh, all right. So um, this is my take on it, right? And see, see what you guys think. Many of his, in my opinion, many of much of what RFK is saying about the medical stuff isn't accurate. Okay, the why not accurate. is not accurate. The Wi-Fi blood barrier thing, vaccines cause autism. The the maybe the vaccine injury is a real thing. My I come from a family of scientists, so my dad, my mom, they're both biochemical engineers. My dad used to make vaccines in the Soviet Union, didn't take the COVID one, but in general, you know, he can explain it to me what's going on there. Like it's not my opinion, and I'm not a scientist, but my random person's view is I don't think many of the things that RFK is saying are accurate. Okay, but uh, the part that wasn't mentioned in your brilliant Twitter uh, post is that uh, Peter Hota, I think he said that Rogan was part of some kind of neo-fascist thing with like other people, which I think was what Joe was. And then he took that tweet down mm -hmm. and right. then Joe said, I saw that tweet you took down and I responded to it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So talking to, if you just go back to, to my thing, talking talking to RFK, even though I don't agree with everything he's saying, doesn't make you a bad person. And the best way to challenge misinformation is actually good information. If you just scroll down to part two, there's also stuff about COVID, right? Like the vaccines were pushed on people who didn't need them with COVID, 100%. Most masks don't work, and we weren't allowed to say this, right? Mm -hmm. And that is how the science wrecked credibility in itself, okay? That's how we got here. So how do you fix it? Well, you got to restore faith in the science by acknowledging that mistakes were made, communicating honestly. And to me, if you're a scientist and the biggest show in the world says come and talk and look if you think rfk is an idiot and you're a scientist i mean that is a slam dunk yeah. right come in explain to people why he's wrong challenge some of the things he's saying i mean rfk in, in the interview himself says well this is beyond my level of expertise you're a scientist you can make him look pretty silly very easily if you know what you're talking about right and it just it's frustrating that we've lost the idea that we can have conversations if we don't agree and we can have debates and your point as a scientist is to educate the public by coming in and saying this is what's actually going on uh, and engaging with people's ideas instead of just dismissing them so if it's not dr hotez i've never heard of him before prior to this mm -hmm. texas uh, children's uh, chair he's a chair he's a very very he's credible, credible guy, guy. extremely yeah. credible cool. guy all, all good uh, and if it's not Fauci, and if it's Extremely not Extremely credible guy for the people 
on the left who use his mouthpiece to say if he said it, it's 100% yeah. right. So who's next in line? Because why is the, and a debate a bad word? Why is it a bad thing? We have presidential debates. We have a high school debate well, club. We also don't have presidential debates anymore. Mm. No. RFK is not going to be debating Joe Biden. Not well, well not. hold on. We do have presidential debates. I mean, whether they get We a were little... supposed to have three last time. We only ended up having two. People are avoiding presidential debates. So this whole thing about debates, you're right. Yeah. What you're trying to say is a good thing. I'm just saying. like It is the American we've, way. We've right. constantly had debates. Right. Why is it being shut down now? This particular subject, that's my point, okay. is that they're, 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 they're eliminating these essential debates that need to occur. Because your, your post is absolutely right. You don't agree with RFK. You're basically here saying, hey, listen, I don't agree with what RFK's got going on. But I'd like to hear what he has to say, because the whole premise of a debate is to expose the other side's leaks in their argument. Right. And if you're basically saying RFK has leaks in his argument, a lot of people believe that. A lot of people believe that he's saying very accurate things. Mm. The only way to get to the truth is a debate. Right. The Bible, the definition of debate is settling a difficulty with a neighbor or an adversary. And that's the only way you're going to get to this. So if it's not Fauci and it's doc not Dr. Hotep. Who's next in line? Because for every RFK out there, there's a Robert Malone, there's a Dr. Peter McCulloch that we've had here. These people are willing to engage, they're willing to debate, and they could be wrong, but they're willing to at least come to the table. Who's willing to come to the table on the other side? Well, here's the part. So this, this is what you're asking a good question, but you also know the answer to the question, okay? I mean, it's not like you don't know the answer to the question. We all know the answer to the question. So here's a guy named Mehdi Hassan. You know who Mehdi Hassan is? We know Mehdi Hassan, okay. MSM. So he says, uh, noted conspiracy theorist who has zero background in medicine and public health and said COVID would be gone by April 2020, thinks he knows more about vaccines than the world-renowned award-winning scientist who helped create patent-free COVID vaccines for the poor. Mehdi Hassan is defending for RFK, uh, defending Peter Hotez to not debate RFK. Does that make sense? Now, here's the crazy part. Do you know Mehdi Hassan just wrote a book? Mehdi Hassan just wrote a book, okay, that came out. I want to say it's very recently that this book came out. This book just came out to give the date, February 28th of 2023. The title of the book is Win Every Art, The Art of Debating, Persuading, and Public Speaking. The guy writes a book on debating. No wonder it didn't sell any copies. You write this book, then you're scared shitless of Peter Hotez debating. By the way, so let's just say, Mehdi, if you're watching this, since you're such a great debater, which you claim you are, you wrote the book. We don't claim we are that. You're claiming you're this. No problem. Mehdi, question for you. You don't think RFK is qualified to debate him? Hey, Peter McCullough is. Mm -hmm. Um, Robert, Robert Malone, Malone is. We got a few other people that for you to have the qualification of doctors, we can get a lineup of people that would be willing to debate Peter Hotez. So that kind of hurts your argument, doesn't it? And it kind of hurts your argument to say RFK is not a doctor. And you know what is pretty wild? Guys like him, you know probably who his hero was? You know probably who his hero was? Who was your favorite American president of all time? JFK. John F. Kennedy. Of course, of course. You know what John F. Kennedy did? He was an anti-establishment president. Yep. What do you think RFK is doing? He's an anti-establishment uh, figurehead. Yeah. So the people you admired, you now you don't like so that family lineage because weird. they're pushing back on people like you. And you just wrote a book on debate, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like horrible on what you're doing, man. Exactly. It's hypocrisy. <laughs> but but the, Adam, you named it, though. It's like, why wouldn't they, right? Constantine, why wouldn't you? Because when, you, when you're there and the camera's on and it's you and it's fact versus fiction, you have to be real. You're going to get exposed. And your lies and your mistakes are going to mm -hmm. come out live. And you have to answer for yourself. Why would they want to do that, Adam? You want to be held accountable? You want to have your foot to the fire? They can't do it, bro, because all their bullshit is going to come out. And I think one of the reasons, just setting aside the debate side of this, the, the way that censorship of, of this kind of conversation has been happening, particularly during COVID, it's like, I get the sense that they just don't trust the ordinary person to make their own mind up. And I think we've got away from this idea that your life is your responsibility. Like, you're supposed to go out, take in different information, and then decide for yourself what you're right. supposed to do. And if you F that up, that's on you. 
right? Yeah. And that's w- that's the way that society is supposed to function. I don't want big daddy government telling me how to live my life on every aspect of it. I want the information. Mm-hmm. I want to make my own decision. And if I get that wrong, well, that's on me, and I'll suffer the consequences of that. You hit the nail on the head. It, it comes down to individual decisions because what basically was plastered out there was a one-size-fits-all, basically, right. agenda. Everyone needs to do this. Yeah. Well, it turns out, I mean, there's a big difference between an 85-year-old woman and a 21-year-old dude. Right. And they and the same treatment should not be implemented for those types of people. But they, they, they lambasted everyone if they didn't follow the doctrine. And a lot of confused people, whether it doesn't need to be politically, you're just like, I don't know about any of this stuff. These are terms I've never heard before in my life. COVID-19, social distancing, masked up. You're like... A debate would be the only way for reasonable people to be like, you know what? All right, cool. That's a good argument right there. I didn't think of that. Yep. All right, good. That's not for me, but my mom should consider that. All right, cool. But that's the only way you get to the truth. And that's essentially the problem here. And, and why is it only in this realm? If there if there was like a rap battle and someone wanted to, yo, I'm a better to rapper stage. than you, Jay-Z. Get to the stage. Step on stage, Step on homie. Stage. Let's, go. Let's see what you got. And yep. then. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. If it's an actual boxing match, you ever see these things on YouTube where some guy's talking shit online yeah. to a professional boxer? Like, I'll whoop your ass. Yeah. It's like, find me at the gym. Dude shows up at the, the gym. gym. Yep. All right, put on some put on Spike. some pads. Yep. All of a sudden, the guy talking shit gets the shit kicked out of him. Turns out, but if you don't actually show up to the debates, how do you know that your side has any validity whatsoever? Now, that's what I'm saying. Who's going to have the balls Nobody. to, to use don't. a little callback right they there they they to don't. show up and at least defend your defend your side? You make you make a great point about, you know, the elite left thinks they know matter, better than the average guy. Right. And they do not trust the average people to make decisions. In a democracy, we have a word for average people, voter. So, it's, <laughs> you know, and I think there's an opportunity that we have to step back from all this and let the voters, you know, vote and suffer the consequences of what you voted for. I mean, how many times did you see in a, in, a, in my own family, I had grandparents that voted for Jimmy Carter and then voted for Ronald Reagan saying, well, we as we the people got it wrong. We were so mad at Gerald Ford about Nixon. We voted for Carter. There's the economy we got. Whoops. At the first opportunity, they fired Jimmy Carter. That's the way it should work. When you have the liberalism that sits there that says, we are elite and we have predisposed knowledge and we know better than you do. That's an elitist point. And that's why the chasm that doesn't allow a lot of debates to start is coming from the conservative side that says, listen, you seem to think I'm evil. I just think you're incorrect. I think there's value in your personhood. I just want to debate the point. Big point. Whereas the liberal comes the other way and says, no, you are an evil person that needs to be deprived and moved off. You know, you sit back and you pull back from that and you say, who's the Nazi now? Yeah. And look, from my perspective, I just think the truth matters. Like, let me ask you guys this. Where did, where did COVID come from? Wuhan lab in China that we funded. Right. 100%. Right. Period. If you said well, that so, if you said that a year and a half racist. ago, I was racist. You, don't worry about racist. You would be shut down from yeah. YouTube. 100%. You would be taken down. Okay? Oh, you're just like right. Trump who called it the China virus. <laughs> yeah. You're a bad but, person. And, you have to be quiet. And we need to know so it doesn't happen again. Like if you thought the pandemic was bad, don't you want to find out how it started? Mm-hmm. Don't you want to fix the problem that caused it in the first place? And I don't want uh, some 20 year old in California, which is who's making these calls, mm-hmm. right? Deciding what we're allowed and not allowed yes. to discuss and debate and share, right? That, that to me is crazy. And look, I'm not left or right. I'm kind of an independent somewhere in the middle. I just care about the truth. Can we get to the truth? Can we mm-hmm. find out how this happened? Can we find out what the truth was about masks? Can we have an honest conversation? Maybe we didn't need to vaccinate five year olds, <laughs> right? Maybe we did. And in my opinion, you know, for old people, that would, if I was 80 years old, I would have taken the vaccine. 100%. Yeah. Day one, the moment it came out. But you want to put it on children just so you can feel a little bit better? You want to force people to wear a mask all day that we know doesn't work? Like, why are we doing that? It's insane. You're absolutely right, by the way. We're we're on the same side politically right there. And and like to to what Vinny said, when he said 100%, 100% it came from a lab. I don't know that. You don't know that. You believe that. We need to investigate. what What we don't know is... Nothing's 100%. Right. I'm not 100% certain it came from a lab. I'm also definitely not 100% certain it came from a pangolin banging a bat in a wet market. Like, I don't know. And that's the whole fucking point of a debate. But the, but but you know why why I keep going to that it is? Yeah. Because of the secrecy and the hype. Dude, it's how many years later? When, when did COVID hit, Pat? 
What, what yeah. year? December 2019. Yeah. 2019. 2029, December 2019. We are yeah. in June 2003, and we still don't know. Yeah, right. Are you, who, who's, li- like, are you, are you kidding well, me? Well, this right goes now? to your accountability thing yeah. that we're talking about. When is China going to be held accountable here for that, this? Well, dude, China, hold on. China gets accountable for nothing. They could, they could fly spy balloons, and our mm-hmm. government just goes, no, no, they're not even, they're not taking pictures. Mind you, they're over a nuclear missile base that I was stationed at, Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana. No, no, no. China is running the show, and we still, to this day, right now, how about this, Adam? I'm 99.999% that it came from there. The real question is, who leaked it, and why did they leak it? Let me add one more thing. Let's be real with each other. You bring up China here. Thank God that in America, we have the ability to use that word debate. Yeah. You think they're having debates in communist China? You think they're having debates in Russia with Vladimir Putin? Do you think that his uh, approval ratings are somehow magically 100% for the 20 years running? So that's the whole premise of what we do here in America is ha- be able to have these debates. Mm. And for these in these individual realms where no, no debates here, can't have debates there, can't have debates with reasonable with unreasonable people. It's like that's the essence of the problem because the whole foundation of what we do here in America is the ability to debate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the job of scientists is to come out and educate the public, right? To give them the information they need to make their own decisions. That's what a scientist is there to do. I would love to see a scientist run circles around RFK. Meaning, yeah, yeah, like, meaning I would love to see that yeah, right. and be like, holy shit, Dr. Fill in the blank name just schooled the guy that's basically putting out all this conspiracy theory around uh, about uh, yeah, prove them vaccines. Wrong. Okay, great. Prove them wrong. Now the whole world saw the RFK lose. All right, great. Shining light yeah. onto the darkness over here. Yep. But if nobody's able to do that, how are we all going to learn? And we should give some love to Joe as well, because the one thing that I think he's really established is he's a dispassionate uh, reasonable, you know, he's a genuine guy. So yeah. if, if they were to come together and actually have the conversation, he wouldn't be like dunking on whoever was on the other side. He would actually host that properly. Yes. Uh, and, and so people don't need to be afraid of going in there and having the conversation as well. You made a point in the middle of all this about uh, four minutes ago, and you said, I don't want some 20-year-old in California uh, making a decision for me. You know, what you're talking about is the hundreds of censors under the guise of, under the title of content moderate specialists that were sitting inside Facebook, sitting inside Google, at, over at YouTube, and all this, that were making decisions on this. And so we're all talking about the enablement to debate. What you, you brought up is very important, is we had a whole tech sector that was prohibiting any presentation of any facts that could become debate if they felt they came from the wrong side. So not only do we have the issue of debate, we had the issue of the tech side deciding, pre-deciding the debate, and snuffing facts and opinions to come on the other side that now they're sitting back with the classic, uh, what's it, the the classic tweet, blah, 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 oh, wait, yeah. dot, dot, dot. Do you guys know Jay Bhattacharya? Are you familiar with him? Yeah, of course. Right, right, right. Absolutely. From, uh, he, absolutely. So, so the, this is some, some things that happened during COVID, like, didn't make sense to me. So in the UK, we had this uh, situation where, uh, so Jay was uh, one of the great Barrington guys, and he was basically a really well-credentialed, really sensible doctor who was saying we're going the wrong way in terms of our response to COVID. And so this is a guy who is a scientist being censored online <laughs> by people who aren't scientists, right? And we're being told that this is all about the science when someone like him is not being taken seriously by people in California who are just making these decisions on a whim. And in the UK, we had an even worse situation where they were trying to get doctors. They were trying to say to doctors and nurses, if you don't take the jab, you're, you're going to lose your job. Right. And there's this amazing scene where the government minister, who is not a doctor, is telling a doctor to take the jab. And you're going, does that make any sense to you? A non-medical professional trying to force a medical professional to take a vaccine that that guy doesn't want to take? Right. How, how, how are we in the, the irony? And, and then we keep talking about the science. Right. Where's the science on that? Where's the science? There is none. No, we, we need these debates to be taking place. Right. And by the way, if there's no debate taking place. Uh, it's only one sign. It's a sign of fear that something could be exposed. But people have to keep pushing. Listen, we have Whitney Webb here. Whitney Webb is doing all the research on what she was doing with Jelaine Maxwell, with you know Epstein and Robert Maxwell, all these guys, right? Phenomenal job of what she's doing. We need people who are from the inside 
where they knew this stuff wasn't going to work or the side effects and all of these things. We need those whistleblowers to come out and say, look, I'm a person that was pro-vaccine. Here's what I did. At this point of the game, I am not comfortable taking this. I can't live with myself anymore. I just want to share money. This is going to be a career ending. No one's ever going to hire me again. No pharmaceutical company's ever going to hire me again. Here's exactly what took place. Dot, dot, dot. We need some people like that. That's, and by the way, I, I'm firm, I firmly believe that is going to happen. I firmly believe that's going to happen. Except I don't know when the movie's going to be shot. I don't know if the movie's going to be in the next two years, three years, five mm-hmm. years, ten years. There is going to be a movie made, many movies made about this period mm-hmm. of 2020 to 2022. Many, many movies. But by the time they make it, Fauci's going to be dead. Mm-hmm. That's when these movies are going to be made. Yeah. And then we're going to say, that little weasel, yep. if he Rat. did this, he did that. That little guy that did this. Yep. By the way, so will Biden, so will Trump. There's a difference, okay. though. No, there's a difference, though. The, the movie for, for the only difference between a movie for Trump versus the movie for a Biden versus a movie for Fauci is... Everybody had Fauci and Biden's back. No one had Trump's back. Yeah. Everybody had their back. It's a different kind of a movie. I know sometimes it's politically correct to kind of throw it in there and just kind of, just like this and just like that and just like this. No, the, the one guy was muzzled. We forget. He's, he can tweet. He doesn't tweet anymore. We forget he was banned from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube as a president by a social media company. What? Do we forget this? Right. Who else do they do this to? You mean to tell me Biden's never told lies? When did they ban this guy? He, he, is, this the fir- is this the first president that's ever told a lie if he did tell a lie? How about all the other guys that came before him? How about, have you seen what Barack Obama looks like? Did you see him on oh, Charlemagne, the God's rough. podcast? I don't rough. know if you saw the one Charlemagne. The he does not look good. He does not look confident. Mm-hmm. He looks weak. He looks like he's having a hard time giving his argument to Charlemagne, mm-hmm. like he's trying to defend, but he can't. Mm-hmm. Did, how, did, how did you go from, uh, well, you know, at least uh, I will go down as a president, you know, and that yeah. whole yeah, mic yeah. drop on yeah. Fallon or Fallon. Kimmel, whichever yeah, yeah. one it was. And then he's like, well, you know, hey, uh, there's a guy in here who believes, and, you know, it's at the dinner. I don't know if you guys remember that whole speech. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you will never be in a White House, and then, boom, he gets the White House. And then, you know, uh, what's his name? Snoop Dogg roasts him and says, this ain't the first time a Trump put a black man out of his house. You know, I don't know if you remember <laughs> yeah, when Snoop yeah. roasted him. Yeah, yeah. He did what he did. But, How but, recent was the Obama Charlemagne? Uh, last week? Last week. Really? Yeah, it was a week Last ago. week. Do you have if any you, images of that, Rob? Have we ever seen it? How go, bad was it? Oh, just go watch it. It's very, uh, I, I can guarantee you there's a reason why this thing hasn't made it out yeah, to too many people. Yeah, I haven't seen any of this. There's a reason for that. Because Charlemagne was asking the questions a lot of people wanted to ask. And Charlemagne's a Democrat. Of course he is. But he did not look good on this interview. Can you imagine? By the way, here's what I want you to think about. No, just stay right yeah. there. Look at this. Oh, no, go back to where you were at. You were fine where you were at. The, 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 ah, where is it? Uh, anyways, I'll try to find it to show it yeah. to you. But the, it's weird that it's not, it's not popping up. up. Yeah, why why not, is that? Yeah, let me up. see. And by the way, it, it, if, it's, if it's recent or if it's... If it's the one that's a couple years ago, whichever one it was, two years ago. I have to tell you, the, the conversation about blacks, Obama looked so weak, and he's been out there very quiet, not kind of presenting himself too much, not talking about anything. These movies are going to be made, and we're going to look back one day saying, man, we were definitely manipulated during that two- or three-year period oh, from well, 2020 let, let me to guys, 2021. Uh, let me ask you guys a question. So imagine big tech existed at the time of the American Revolution. Oh, my. <laughs> oh my Is this goodness. country independent right now? I don't think Is so. it? Absolutely not. Right. No, the crown would have uh, ensured that it was. Hey, these people up. are causing real world harm by <laughs> by creating stirring up division. <laughs> right. We got to shut it down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, King George would have shut right. that thing King down. George ASAP. Right. That's what you're saying, right. basically. Because right there's there. real world violence yeah, going on based on what these people are saying in their yeah. pamphlets and the in the newspaper. It would have been called big monarchy, but no, a great point there, by right? the way. The, the, the big te- if the big tech is around in 1776, we aren't sitting here having this conversation. Hundred percent. Yeah, and that comes back to the the basic premise I was saying that the foundation of America is to be able to debate and to be able to basically state your beliefs without being encumbered 
by big tech censorship or big King George censorship, basically saying, no, you can't do that. It's a great point that you're making right now because the foundation of America is being a dissident and being saying, yeah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. This whole no taxation without representation thing, that don't work for me, dog. Mm -hmm. That don't work for me, King George. And that's essentially the premise here. And we're seeing it shift from the hard right to the hard left. And that's the scary thing. By the way, they, they, Mark Cuban was seen wearing a shirt. Have you seen the shirt he wears? Where uh, type in Mark Cuban question uh, everything or something like question authority, I think is what it's called. Okay. Go to question authority. This is his shirt. Okay. Question authority. Zoom in. He's there wearing a shirt question authority. Yeah. He's another shirt question authority. Uh, uh, hey, Mr. Mark Cuban, why aren't you questioning authority? Yeah. Okay. Bombing the authority down. is an IH. The authority is the guidelines of COVID. You talk about question authority. All right, you you have the mic. You, you're a, you're a triple threat. Mm -hmm. You're a guy that made the billions. You're the guy that runs a sports team. You're a guy that's had a very successful TV show for how long now? Ten years, fifteen yeah. years? I don't know what the number is. It's been a long time. Yeah. It's a great now he show. Has a drug, now he has a drug company. Well, he's got a lot of different yeah. things. But the point is, killing it. This is a guy that can argue on both sides. If mm -hmm. this is part of your brand, why don't you question authority? We should question authority. You, you bring know. up such a good point about Cuban, because let you know since we're going revisiting history, 1776. What would big tech be? Who would Mark Cuban been been 20 years ago if he didn't have this mindset? This guy was a trailblazer and a disruptor in the NBA. This guy was getting fined, the most fined the owner in history. This guy was getting fined day after day, week after week for basically doing what? Questioning well, the authority please. of yeah. David Stern of yeah. the NBA. Hey, I don't like this rule. Fine. Hey, I don't agree with this. Fine. He was getting fined left and right. You're looking at me like maybe you don't know much about basketball. I'm, I'm a huge basketball <laughs> fan, actually, right, right. Okay, but gotcha. that I didn't know about. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, this guy yeah. was he getting was fined yeah. left and right. And the fact that it's it's kind of him saying now, no debate. Debates are off the table. It's just a little ironic. And I, people have people people you know have memories. It's like this is one of the reasons that you know you find such issue with Arnold Schwarzenegger. They made a joke and the about thing it. that that he has said, like, forget your freedoms. Oh, it's coming like, with this that is accent. The guy. Yeah, yeah, with that Screw accent. Screw your freedoms. It's like, this is the guy yeah. who was the biggest advocate for freedom. Yeah. And it's like people remember what you stood for 20 years ago and then the hypocrisy of what it stands for now. And and that's – okay, he was accumulated roughly wow. $4 million in fines in the NBA. Yeah, this was that dude. Yep. This was the disruptor. So, in the NBA, this was the guy calling out nonsense. This was the Trump – of the NBA, and now that you've made your money, you made your billions, you've rent, you've won your championship, you know. Yeah, but why? Adam, sing a different Adam, tune. Well, why? Why Mark Cuban of all people? Why is he so pushing? Like he even did it. Like we talked about Pat with uh, with Beasley, the the wide receiver for the Cowboys. Cole that was Beasley. like a Cole Beasley. Yeah. I'm not doing. He's like, I'll pay. I'll give you stock. And why is Mark Cuban so invested in what is going in other people's bodies? At the end of the day, he doesn't give a shit about the average person. What's his What's his incentive? Does he have Does he have stock? And Pfizer is he bought like I know he's, he has a drug company now, but I don't think. Why are you so I, worried though? Why is he I, so caring? I don't think I, this guy's worth. I don't know what he's worth. Can Million. you pull up his net worth? He's probably four or five billion dollars yeah. at this point. I don't know what the number but is. But Pat, why, why is he so <laughs> pushing on this? Why is he so five point one billion dollars? Why is he so pro vaccine and pro? Like I don't get it. What, what, I'm not what's your motive? I'm not worried that he's pro vaccine. I'm worried that he's anti debate. You could be pro whatever the hell you want. But if you're not willing to at least come to the table and say, here's why I believe in this. All right, you believe in this? Let's engage. I don't. You could be pro whatever the hell you want, mm -hmm. if but you, it's if what you you're chose, anti. It's, yeah. If you choose Joe Rogan and Peter Hotez, Tom, between Joe Rogan and Peter Hotez, whose authority? In, in what subject? Just, just No, no. No, so the, the authority. What, Joe Rogan is not an authority in in, in he doesn't he's, he's authorize me to do. He's a moderator. So between yeah. Joe Rogan and Peter Hotez, who is the authority? Uh, Hotez is the objective yes. authority. Decorated, we can prove it. Experience, yeah. perfect. We can in prove this it. case, Mark Cuban defended the authority. He didn't question the authority. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Period. Period. Simple Period. as that. I mean, we can move on with this conversation. Yeah. So a man who was a pillar for questioning authority isn't questioning the real. Authority is questioning the guy that's questioning authority. <laughs> yeah. Joe Rogan is questioning authority, and you're not defending the guy that's questioning authority that validates the shirt you always wore when you were an NBA owner. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. So that's where the that's where the problem comes in here. Hey, if you enjoyed this short clip, you want to watch the whole thing, click over here. But if you want to make 2023 the beginning of the greatest years of your life, I host a conference 
Once a year, it's called the Vault Conference, where 3,000 CEOs, executive entrepreneurs from around the world come together to strategize for three and a half days. This year, it's going to be at Miami Diplomat Resort. And the speakers this year is going to be Tom Brady. He'll be there. I'll be interviewing him. Mike Tyson, Will Gadara, the guy that ran 11 Madison in New York. If you run a business, if you're a CEO, entrepreneur, and executive, this is not an event you want to miss out on. Get yourself, your spouse, your business partner, your running mates registered, and I look forward to seeing you there. Click on the link here or see the link in the description, and I hope to spend three and a half days with you in Miami in August and September. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.